Hi, my name's Keenan Gans. Uh, this is my mini teach uh, video for my mini teach lesson. Um, my grade level is kindergarten. Uh, I chose that um, because that's the, the internship I had and I wanted to, to do something that I knew would be relevant to, to that age level. Um, the Kansas College and Career Ready Standards that uh, my activity meets is the counting and cardinality. Um, it covers standard six and standard seven. Uh, standard six is to identify whether the number of objects in one group is greater than, less than, or equal to the number of objects in another group. Um, this can be done by using matching and counting strategies. Uh, standard seven is to compare two numbers between one and ten presented as written numerals. Um, and with the activity that I chose the colossal counting. Um, both of those are covered in this. Um, my objective uh, is students will compare numbers and their differences at a rate of four out of five times. Um, students will compare numbers and their differences at a rate of four out of five times. Uh, the book I chose to go along with this activity is the 12 days of kindergarten uh, I thought it would be good uh, for the kindergarten class. They could kind of relate some of it to, you know, their day um, and, and what they go through in the kindergarten classroom. Also, there's a couple pages in here um, that have different groups of, of items at different numbers, so we could use them uh, to compare uh, as a class. I could show the class, you know, two different numbers on there as well and how they compare to each other. Uh, the manipulatives uh, that I use in my activity um, that come out of our, our kit uh, is a number cube, um, and then you need 40 pop cubes uh, per group, and a marker or button, some kind of little game piece for, for each student to keep their place on the uh, colossal counting activity sheet. Um, and this is the, the, the lesson I chose, the colossal counting. And this is a look at the activity sheet. Um, you can see there's a bunch of uh, numbers here. And, and students basically roll the, the cube. And however far they get, you know, if they roll down to here, say uh, they roll four. So they're going to move four spots right here, and it's got a three on it. So the number on the cube doesn't matter as much as the number in the, the block there. And then they would then take uh, four of the pop cubes from there and then it would be their partner's turn. And that's how they um, accumulate the, the pop cubes and then have to compare numbers with, their, with what their uh, partner got. As far as uh, the outline of my activity and how it would go, uh, I would start by reading that book aloud to the class. Uh, like I said, we'd use a couple of the pages there to, to uh, compare numbers, talk about the differences and whatnot and uh, we discuss the numbers and the pictures in the book. Um, some of the questions or essential questions and statements that I would use beforehand. Um, compare is one of my vocabulary words, so we would use that word, word in one of the questions. I would ask what that means. Um, we would talk about it, and, and that way the, the class would get a good understanding of, of what the word compare means and when we, what we mean when we say compare two numbers to each other. Um, once we did that, I would ask the class to compare a number of their choice to today's date. And since this was written for October 6, they would be comparing um, a number of their choice to the number 6. And then they would create a drawing um, of their comparison of those two numbers. You know, so if they took, chose the number 3 to compare to the date of October 6, you know, they could draw three circles and then six circles and and uh, that way they could compare which is more, which is less, or if they were equal, uh, if they chose the same number. Uh, so those would be my essential questions and statements beforehand. Um, next, I would introduce the number cube, pop cubes, the colossal counting activity sheet, uh, so the students are familiar with them. Um, I would go through them on the document camera, kind of, kind of through a warm up. Um, and kind of play the game, you know, as me being one of the, the participants and then calling students up to participate. Um, and that way the class can kind of get a feel for how it's supposed to go. 
and they kind of see and a few of them actually get to interact with it as well. Uh, once we do that, I'd pair the students together. Um, I'd have that predetermined based on, you know, how they work with certain students, uh, you know, achievement levels and whatnot. And then I would um, designate one of the partners to come collect uh, the mani manipulatives and uh, take them to their other partners so we don't have every student up and around the, the classroom. Um, then I would have the students get going on their own on the Colossal County practicing for a couple minutes. Um, you know, I'd be around, uh, probably going to be a lot of questions at first on this. So this is really just a chance for them to kind of play real quick. Um, you know, play with the pop cubes, the uh, number cube, and, and get a feel for the game. And then, you know, if I notice anything that's not going well or they're not understanding, we'll revisit it. I'll talk about it. And then we'll start, you know, kind of the real game, uh, you know, where they're playing it against their partner and, and go from there once I feel like the class has a good understanding of it. <clears throat> uh, once we get going, uh, there'll be a few questions that, and statements that I asked ask during uh, to check for knowledge, um, you know, as they're taking turns. I can, you know, write on the spot, have them discuss who has more cubes, um, and, and kind of give them, you know, strategies to, to figure that out, you know, by uh, putting the cubes in stacks of 10 and then seeing how many are left over, if you have two stacks of 10 and a few left over, and that way they can kind of compare that way visually. Um, my skills question would be examine your last two turns to see which is more, so that way they're, they're not even looking at what their partner does. It's just on their their last two turns and the pop cubes that they've accumulated. And then reasoning, um, I would ask them just by looking at their collection if they can estimate how many they have so far. Um, you know, that way they can kind of just hopefully use some of the strategies we've we've learned and talked about in class and, and give an estimate real quick on, on how many they have. All this will be done, you know, as I'm walking around and, and meeting with with different groups or different partners um, at different times. That way the, the kids can kind of get going on their own. Um, I then move to closure um, by doing some examples where the students are the pop cubes. So um, again, I would be up front or on the document camera and we'd use uh, students as pop cubes. So if I rolled a three, I'd have three, two, three students come stand up and then I'd have another student that I was playing against and you know whatever their their uh, marker landed on if they had five we'd have five students come up and that way you know we're getting the students up there and, and they're representing the pop cubes um, they're kind of being involved in the process and hopefully it it helps uh, drive home the point and, and what we're talking about and then after the lesson um, some of the essential questions and statements I would have is we would go back over the word compare and talk about how it was used uh, in the activity and what the what the students thought of that. Um, we would demonstrate the comparisons between two numbers using students instead of pop cubes and then to finish up um, we would do the writer's wrap which in this um, activity the colossal counting the writer's wrap is the students would complete the following frame sentence. I have a collection of blank and blank. I know that I have a total of blank because, and I would have them do that for two, uh, two different examples. And then that way they can show me what their understanding is. Uh, I would then collect those before we move on to, you know, whatever the next um, thing is in our day. You know, if we're going out to recess, that's their ticket to recess. They have to hand that hand that in, um, you know, before they go out. So, um, and then how I, would I assess the students in this activity? Um, it would be based on me getting around the room and uh, having them give me, you know, three examples with their partner, showing how they compared, and then also doing the two uh, writer's wraps. Uh, so that's my mini teach lesson. Thanks.